Good morning, everyone. I am John Sears. I am the Admin Services Coordinator for Forest Parks and Recreation. Thanks for joining me again for our Office Essential series. Today we're talking about one of my favorites, which is OneNote. And when it comes to OneNote, it is a lot of people treat it as a OneNote tool. Um, when we take a look at the various tools that are being used across state government, from the February to July timeframe, you could see Outlook here is the number one tool, followed closely by Teams, and then Word and Excel, you know, the workhorse tools that everyone uses. And then PowerPoint down here, then all the way at the bottom, OneNote with 625 people. That's a criminal number. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about the functionality of what OneNote can provide, as well as make a sales pitch that maybe you should be taking uh, taking advantage of OneNote. All right, so a little bit of outline about what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to cover basic features. Uh, there are a lot of basic features in OneNote to cover, but we're going to cover notebooks, tabs, sections, subpages, whiteboard functionality, content types, searching and finding, as well as full screen. And we're going to talk a little bit about some advanced features, including tags, sharing, set as background. We're going to do a little exercise where we're going to create a OneNote checklist and then we'll end on some best practices. But the primary takeaway I want you to come away from this training with is that OneNote is more than just a note taking app. It's a very robust tool for collecting information and it is a really powerful tool for doing that. So first let's talk about tabs and sections. So the way information is subdivided in OneNote is through notebooks, sections, and pages. By default, most accounts come with a notebook, um, but you can create any number of notebooks for your OneNote. And within each notebook, there are also sections, and they can appear differently depending on whether you're using the um, application version of OneNote or the uh, old style software version of OneNote. Um, they look a little bit different when you're breaking down um, sections and pages. Sections and pages look like this if you're doing the application and sections and pages are listed on the top and the right if you're using the in Office 365 version. Um, so things are subdivided such that you can establish individual sections and within each section there are a series of pages. You can have any number of sections and you can have any number of pages within those sections. You can also have sub pages of pages which allows even further distinctions to be made between the various um, pages you have. And if you want to do that, it's as easy as right clicking and say making a sub page. So what that does is that creates a page that you can collapse and uncollapse as you need. So that's how information is subdivided. And you might notice these things have different colors. Um, all of this stuff is customizable. So I have these things color coded so that I know the topics that are being covered. And I have multiple notebooks that I use for multiple different purposes. All right, let's talk a little bit about some more functionality. So at a base level, OneNote can function as a whiteboard. It's a really powerful whiteboard that you can use either uh, if you're already in a meeting and you don't want to use the actual whiteboard tool, which we're going to be covering in two weeks or three weeks. Um, but it's a whiteboard for you to do what you want. So you can um, make this full screen so that you can have literally as much white space as you want. Um, there's rudimentary whiteboard functionality, so you can draw, you can type, you can put blocks of text literally anywhere. You can build a kind of sort of flow chart if you want to, although it's not the ideal tool for that. It if you're not sure what type of thing you should have in order to be recording information, OneNote's the ideal thing to have open. It's way better and more versatile than Word. It's um, It has all the functionality of Word and then some. 
as we're going to get into. So it's not just about what you put in there in terms of typing or drawing, but there are all kinds of content types that can all be stored on your individual pages. So flexibility is the key. You can collect videos, attachments. I mean, look at the varieties of things that you can inject into uh, a OneNote page. So tables, spaces, printouts, either of, you could just literally click and drag an email into a OneNote page and it will give you the option of be like, hey, do you want me to print out this email on this OneNote page for you? Or you can attach it as an attachment in there. You can inject spreadsheets, diagrams, pictures, links. Um, sometimes it'll do fun things with links. In the past, I have uh, copied and pasted a link to Microsoft Stream, which is Microsoft's kind of sort of YouTube. Um, and it took that link that I posted to the channel in Microsoft Stream and turned it into a widget where you can actually watch videos in OneNote, which is wild. Um, you can include dates, times, templates. Really, you can put all kinds of content on here. It really is a one-stop shop for everything relating to whatever it is you're talking about, whether it and it's as easy as clicking and dragging content on there. You can start typing anywhere or everywhere. I'll show you a bunch of examples because I use OneNote extensively, and I'll show you kind of some of the variety of things that you can access. Um, so that's just basic functionality present in OneNote, but there are also some more advanced features. So tags and sharing. So you can create checklists, priorities, and you can customize tags. These tags are really great because it allows you to come back to information that you might find in the future or uh, utilize it in other sources. Uh, it's really great for sharing. So you can share it in a couple ways. You can store individual notebooks on Teams. So you could have a notebook for your team to store vital information about individual projects. Again, there's so much flexibility about how that information is partitioned between notebooks, pages, and sections, and subpages that you can really parse out all of the information you need in one source. Um, it's also really great for facilitation. You know, um, I'm a really strong advocate for uh, facilitated exercises, but sometimes you might go into a meeting and you don't necessarily know what kind of tool you're going to need. And when you do that, I love having OneNote up and ready because I'm taking my own personal notes on OneNote, but if I need to break it out and start sharing and I need a all of a sudden whiteboard, it's it's great to have that there. The other thing that you can do is you can take an individual picture and save it as a background. So you can create templates for all kinds of things within OneNote, and you could just start typing in there. Um, and I've done that for a lot of my coaching stuff, and I'll show you guys that in a bit. So there are all kinds of tags that you can put on here. Checklists, you can mark things as important. Questions, you can highlight you can inject various types of information and this is all really important because OneNote also has a really robust search feature so if you're someone like me that's very prolific in OneNote and you're like oh man I remember I took a note about this thing but I don't remember what page it's on or what section it's in you could just start typing it in and it'll help you find it whether it's tagged or not it'll literally find any content. And there's some built-in optical character recognition. So if you've got some stuff that's um, not in text, you can still get some text. So let's go ahead and hop in OneNote. I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff that I've built in OneNote so you can sort of see the degree of flexibility we're talking about. And we'll go ahead and work together to create a checklist. So first, let's go ahead and grab OneNote. This is my OneNote. You can see I've got a whole bunch of tabs across the top here for the various um, types of work that I do. So I've got my general one, which is where I just will create notes. It's really easy also to move pages between sections. So if you start in a section and you're like, this doesn't really fit here, I want to move it to a new section. It's really easy to do. You just right click it and you can say move or copy. Um, so 
the drone work that I do, the learning and management team for strategic planning, tech support, the various um, improvement efforts I've tackled. And you can see here this kind of sort of flowchart that I've built in here. It's not the ideal tool for doing a flowchart, but you can see it's possible. And each one of the items here is its own distinct block. So you can really pick stuff up, move it around, and format it in a way that you want to. If I go back to some of the templates that I've created here, I've got an A3 template. So just the sort of the left hand side for doing contract style stuff. Um, daily charts. I've got a, um, a fishbone diagram that I've created here for coaching. You see here, I can just start typing anywhere on this, but this picture is a background, so I don't accidentally click on it. It's not covering up anything. But if I want to say start a new coaching project and we'll say a learning one note. Target condition is. Um, use one note for 50% of projects. Oh, I really can't spell today. Um, current conditions, we can go ahead and really insert a, an attachment or a table. So it's really easy to just add some data to this table. Here's the current condition. And it's really easy to click around and move. There are an infinite number of ways to use this. Uh, I can get some stuff out of email by copying and pasting. By default, it will uh, tag the current date whenever you start a new page, so it's really easy to record that information. Um, you can see there are different ways to use this stuff, and there are all these blocks of text that are really easy to move or relocate. Highlights, checklists, plus deltas, all this stuff is available and it's all way more versatile and way more flexible than anything you're going to find in any other Office 365 tool. So let's go ahead and in my notebook, which is again the default notebook that everyone comes with, we're going to go ahead and create a checklist together. So if you have a second monitor up and you want to follow along at home, we can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to general and I'm going to add a page. So again, I just went to one of my tabs and I went ahead and I added a page. And we're going to call this uh, demo because that's what it is. And you see the name that we give it becomes the name of the page. We want to create a checklist so we can either start typing so. Item one, item two, item three, item four. And if we want to make this a checklist, it's as easy as coming up here using these tags and clicking that checkbox item. We do it once, it creates the checklist items, and then it's easy to mark them off as we complete them. We can look at any point at any of the checklists that we've created. All of the items that get tagged as this will show up here. It's we can only find uh, stuff here. There are all sorts of important tags that you can use to try and find and prioritize information within OneNote. But I don't think this page belongs here. I think this belongs over in tech support. So I'm going to go ahead and right click it, move or copy. And I'm going to go ahead and move it to tech support. Uh, Agnes, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, John, how did you how did you search that um, the to do the the checklist part? How did you what was the command that you put in for the search? Sure, um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. So um, I mentioned a search function. In OneNote, you could do a search function right here. So I can find item one. And look at that, it shows me right up here, body contains phrase item one. So that's one way of finding things. The way that we can do the thing that I just did is by 
using these find tags up here. This little toggle. You just made everything about OneNote so much better. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely, that's what I'm here to do. Yeah, you can also, um, if you're using this to take notes and, you're real, and you really want to track your action items, you can also tag things as Outlook tasks. So if I need to do these items this week, I can go ahead and tag them. And then if I go ahead and I run into my to-do list, item four, item three, item two. It's how these tools interact with each other that really brings it to the next level of, uh, of awesomeness. So if you're already in here, it's really easy to do. I am curious if that does anything. No, it doesn't. But at any rate, I'm just going to go ahead and mark these all complete. All right, so just a quick run through of um, some of the options here across the top, and then we'll open things up to questions. Um, so again, we kind of covered all the things that you can insert into here. You can draw, attach figures. It's a more robust version of some of the typical draw stuff you have in other tools. You can look at a history, so you might um, have a collaborative OneNote and you want to be able to find other authors' contributions or see what recent edits are, so you can track history. Um, you can link notes, you can password protect things, so if there's certain things you don't want modified. And there's multiple different kinds of view here to, to look at. All right. So I see there are some questions in the chat. Let's go ahead and tackle those. Um, do templates come with it or do you need to create them yourself? So uh, the, the templates that I've created over here are templates that I created myself. Um, when I need to use one, I basically I have this set of pages that are for these. It's really easy to go ahead and move or copy. So you can copy a new one. So if I want to use this coaching thing to do a tech support effort, I can go ahead and do this, hit copy. And now over in tech support, I have a coaching board that's all set up and ready to go. So it's really easy to like deploy it to a certain location. But I had to create all those for myself. Like this, um, this image is one I found online I, that I made it a background. And now I have it forevermore as a template. Are there any other? Uh, what is the advantage of OneNote for Windows 10 versus OneNote? Um, I have a hard time telling you the advantages to the other form of OneNote. This is still my preferred version of OneNote. Um, I know where everything is, and um, it makes it easy to just see the pieces of it that I want. So this is the full screen version. Um, I can also make the top bar go away so I can I have a lot. I feel like I have a lot more control over how much of the screen I can see in any individual time where I still have access to all my uh, sections and all my pages without taking up too, too much space. Um, I much prefer this. Can you archive individual pages in a notebook? That's a great question. Uh, let's go ahead and pin this back. Um, I'm not sure about that. Um, what I do is I have a um, I have a section set up as I called it expired, where it's basically like I'm not going to touch any of these again. No one's going to need to look at this again, but I didn't want to get rid of them because although it's really easy to get rid of pages, um, I never know when I might want to come back to some of the stuff that's over here. So um, it's set up as uh, its own discrete section and you see I have all of this color coded. Um, so drones is green, learning and management is red, strategic planning is yellow, tech sports orange, my continuous improvement projects are this nice cyan color. Um, the individual program supports are this uh, pale sickly lime green. Uh, the stuff from my old job as lean coordinator is gray because it's still really useful. Um, I have a rocket book, which is a, a notebook that I can use to write into and scan with my phone. I have a uh, entire section set up just for those rocket book scans to come in here that are automatically uh, stored. So 
it can run uh, optical character recognition on some of that stuff and store it in OneNote, which is really, really cool. Uh, I don't use it because my handwriting, as you can tell, is not amazing, but it's uh, everything in one place is really what OneNote uh, tagline should be. Uh, yeah, and you do have OneNote in your, you can, there is a OneNote application on your phone, so you can use it there too. Um, can you send Outlook email to OneNote? So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, so if I have an email that I really, really want to save, uh, let me go ahead and bring up my email. Um, it can be as simple and easy as clicking and dragging. So, and it'll ask you whether you want to attach file or insert printout. Um, there's also a functionality within uh, within Outlook for send to OneNote. So it opens up a little sidebar here. It's got to do some authentication. I wonder if it's going to ask me to sign in or not. Yeah, so it it found all my notebooks. I'm operating off of my notebook. I can open it up. I can look at all the tabs that I have in there. And I can go ahead and store that in drones if I want to. It's not at all a drone email. But let's go ahead and open that back up in OneNote. Go over to drones. Uh, there it is, A&R Weekly. So it basically did a paste of all that information from that email where I can actually edit the text and the attachments are there. All of the information from that email is stored in nice, neat rows. So really, really cool, really, really powerful. And I want to go ahead and delete that page. Um, the other nice thing about this is um, if it's stored in a place where other people have access to it, you can share it. So if uh, I wanted to share information about this drone program, I can go ahead and go here, copy the link to the page, and I can paste that or send that to whomever I want. And as long as I have the correct permission set up, which can sometimes be a little tricky, um, other people, I can bring them in to collaborate on those individual pages. All right. Um, any other questions for me about OneNote? I have, Agnes. I have one. John, is there a way to tell when you've shared a page that you've shared it? Not really. Um, I've, so one of the things that I've used OneNote for in the past is in a shared collaboration. There's an idea, uh, uh there's a, there's a tool called brain writing, um, where basically the idea is you have everyone participate in an exercise where they write down their ideas and then basically everybody like passes it to the right. So then you read the thing that they wrote. And then you kind of spin your ideas off of those and then you pass that to the right, you know, kind of if there's like three or four people, you do it as many times as there are people. And then you reply to those other responses. Um, what we did was we set it up as a shared OneNote where everybody had their own tab. And then all I did was rename the tab so that people knew where to go into for each cycle of that transition because we kind of did like a slow version of it because we were doing it online remotely um, and they were all um, high level leadership. So it was the kind of people that couldn't find like four hours to do a single collaborative meeting. It worked really, really well. Um, the whole permissions side of OneNote is a little bit tricky because there are permissions associated with where the document is stored as well as um, whether or not the information has been shared. Um, it's definitely doable, but there's also no real way of indicating um, what the shared permission of it is without going into the actual notebook itself. OK, thank you. Yeah, but there's no quick way to be like, oh, here's who has access to this. 
Um, unless you are looking at the history of previous editors and then you can see who's accessed it before, but there's, it's harder to know who has access. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions about OneNote? Okay, so this is the last one of these that will cover a specific topic. We are covering four topics in our next half hour meeting. So um, be sure to check that one out. We're going to be covering a lot of stuff really quick, including forms and bookings and a lot of really cool tools that are really, really versatile and powerful. Um, mostly it's going to be about here's a cool thing that you can do with this and um, less than digging into how specifically to use each of those individually. I just kind of want to showcase some of that functionality and then you can always um, learn more. And forms in particular is extremely powerful and useful right now. Uh, thank you guys for taking this journey with me so far. And I think that's in early January, 9th or 10th, somewhere around there. I think it's the 9th. Any more questions about OneNote or any of the Office 365 stuff we've covered so far? All right, my challenge to you, get out there, make this number bigger. Yeah, the people that use OneNote will tell you, will, will scream to the high heavens about all the crazy cool things that you could do with OneNote. Um, the other really great thing about OneNote is that it lives in notebooks. So uh, if you've been taking notes for a really long time and you're getting ready to retire or move to a new job, it, it's really easy to share those resources and make them available as a as a living memory of all the information that you've collected over however long you've been doing something. So uh, it's really easy to keep and maintain those notebooks. All right. Uh, Agnes asked if we can do some more deep dive trainings. You know, after this um, Office Essentials training is done, I will certainly be looking to dig a little deeper. We wanted to kind of give people a broad coverage about what exists out there and what, like, broadly speaking, each of these tools are, because a lot of this is new for a lot of people. Um, but now that the coverage is there for what these things are, we can certainly explore the possibility of doing deeper dives. All right, everybody have a great holiday and I'll see you after the new year. Thanks for coming.